Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Helen Keller, who was both deaf and blind, said that of her two disabilities, deafness was by far the worst misfortune. For she said, blindness separates us from things, but deafness separates us from people. I want to tell you the story of Maher, a 16-year-old boy from a poor family in rural Jordan. When I met Maher the first time, he was very introverted. Ver introverted. He never smiled, didn't joke. We, filled, we fit him with hearing aids, thanks to our female technicians we had trained. A year later, when our team met him again, he was a changed person. He was outgoing, he was joking with everybody, he was smiling. He had learned to become a carpenter while going to school full time and was selling his artwork in the capital and helping earn income for his family. He was fundamentally a different person. Our technicians teased him and said he now had a girlfriend. We at Worldwide Hearing and Hearing Access World, we're not just about better hearing. We're about giving children equal opportunities and empowering them to achieve their full potential. There are 1.3 billion people on Earth with hearing loss. 180 million of them are children. Most of them live in developing countries, and almost none of them have access to the hearing aids they need. There are two major barriers to access to hearing aids. The first is price. They're very expensive. The average hearing aid is sold for $2,500 and peaks at $7,000, although they cost as little as $50 to manufacture. Two, not enough medical professionals to actually fit the hearing aids. In Guatemala, for instance, there's one audiologist for the entire country. In Honduras next door, there are none. So that's where Worldwide Hearing comes in. We provide access to affordable hearing aids and services, primarily to children and youth, by training both men and women, but mostly women, to become technicians to be able to provide the services on an ongoing basis. We're on track to uh, fit and screen 100,000 children in our project countries, uh, Jordan, Peru, uh, now working in the Philippines, Vietnam. And we've raised awareness uh, with over 9 million people, a lot of them social activists, to really increase interventions globally. Our solution is about sourcing high quality digital hearing aids at very low cost from existing manufacturers and then training local women to provide them in the field. The women go and they, they sell the hearing aids for inexpensively um, so that they generate revenue they can continue to provide their services long term. They help kids um, and they're trained by an audiologist in under three weeks to be able to do this. Whenever they see anything complex with the ear, ear health issues or profound hearing loss, these are referred straight back to the medical professionals. With this model, we've been able to reduce the cost of provision of hearing aids by over 80%. Thanks to Grand Challenges Canada, we've also launched a for-profit social enterprise called Hearing Access World with the goal of reaching millions of people around the world who have hearing loss and need hearing aids. We're really seeking to disrupt the current status quo in the hearing aid industry and reduce the path between manufacturers and consumers. Our goal is to bring what is right now a very low volume, very high margin model to a much higher volume, lower, mo lower margin model around the world. Uh, we're currently seeking investors and field partners to scale up this work globally. In May 2015, Google.org launched the Impact Disabilities Challenge, and Worldwide Hearing was the first Canadian nonprofit to receive money under this challenge. This enabled us to expand our services to screening kids in schools at sort of mass level. Um, as part of this challenge, we've also uh, helped develop a low-cost toolkit for screening and worked with a company called Clearwater Clinical that's created a shoebox audiometer to develop the ability to have cloud connectivity, so aggregate the data. We're also working with Google to create the first big data project in hearing loss. This goal is really to be the Wikipedia of hearing loss data around the world. Uh, we call it the Global Hearing Loss Database, and we've mobilized the WHO, the World Health Organization, major hearing aid manufacturers, and grassroots organizations around this project. <laughs> I want to tell you a story about a girl named Jana. She's a 10-year-old girl, and uh, I recently received a letter from her in the mail with a $2,000 check to Worldwide Hearing. She wears two hearing aids, and here's the letter she sent me. Hi, my name is Jana, and I have hearing aids. Oh, by the way, she comes from high-level Alberta, way up on the border with uh, the Yukon, a town of about 4,000 people. Hi, my name is Jana, and I have hearing aids. My class started to raise money for kids that can't afford hearing aids. 
I did a presentation to the school on hearing loss and how we can raise money. We did stuff like freezy sales, bake sales, glow-in-the-dark dances, ice cream sales, and many more. We said if we could raise $2,000, our vice principal would dye her hair pink. We did lots of fundraising for this cause. We watched videos in class on hearing loss and kids with hearing loss. I did lots of research on your website and others too. By the end of the year, we raised $2,000 for worldwide hearing. I'm very proud of myself and my class. And our vice principal dyed her hair pink. <laughs> Isn't it fantastic? You know, we were so inspired by her leadership that we decided that as a team, Worldwide Hume would go to high-level Alberta this May and screen all 1,000 kids in that town. And we're also going to be training the teachers and leaving equipment with them so that they can continue to do the screenings every year and ensure timely interventions. Inuit children have some of the highest hearing loss rates in the world. One study shows that 30% of Inuit children have hearing loss compared with only 3% in southern Canada. Children, one out of three, will have a perforated eardrum and will wait months, if not years, before they see an ear doctor. There is one audiologist for the entire Nunavut region, and people with hearing loss see the audiologist maybe once a year, if at all. That is just not okay. Shame on us. As Canadians, we can do better than that. And Jana, a girl like Jana, understands that. What we need in the north are more audiologists and more locally trained Inuit in the communities. I want to talk about this concept of reverse innovation, a term that Peter Singer uses often. You know, when we're working in these developing countries and remote communities, uh, we're working with the beneficiaries on how do we make technologies more accessible, more affordable, more durable. Um, and working with them, we find solutions to reduce cost um, and work out of the box, for example, to go to people with these technologies. And we learn all kinds of things, and we're able to reduce the cost of doing a lot of, these, a lot of these innovations. So we said, hey, if we can do this in these countries, why can't we bring some of this innovation back to Canada? And so thanks to the J.W. McConnell Family Foundation, we're now breaking ground in northern Canada and bringing back a lot of the learning that we've done on projects supported by organizations like Grand Challenges Canada. As you know, disability is included in the Sustainable Development Goals, in five of the goals, in fact. Uh, goals 4, 8, 10, 11, and 17, including quality education, good jobs, economic growth, re reduction of inequalities. But I would argue we cannot achieve the 17, development, the 17 SDGs unless we include 15% of the world's population that are people with disabilities. We have to include them. So our goal over the next seven years with Hearing Access World and Worldwide Hearing is to reach over a million people with hearing aids around the world and also to make hearing loss screenings a requirement in all schools, starting in Canada. If someone like Jana, a 10-year-old, can change the world, imagine what all of us in this room can do. Thank you. <laughs>